Late last night, Josh McDaniels was fired, but a few hours before that, I recorded this video. So there's always several bad teams in the NFL, but some of the most frustrating are those who manage to be unwatchable despite having several of the league's top players. And this is not a record thing, it's not a wins or loss thing, it's that when you watch those teams play, you can see the dysfunction. When it's this bad, it has to fall on the team's coaching. But the media often hesitates to go after certain guys, but not me. Josh McDaniels is one of the league's worst coaches, like for real, bottom three. No one's done less with more. He lost to an ESPN analyst in his first game ever. Prior to this game, Jeff Saturday had only coached in high school. He lost to a one-win Bears team starting a D2 quarterback in his very first NFL start. And there's generally no shame in losing to Baker Mayfield unless he got traded to that team three days before you played him. This is despite having one of the greatest receivers of our generation, a six-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro. The best in the game right now. He's one of those guys he can do everything. Hey, he's, he's the best receiver uh, in the league right now. We've seen QBs being accused of being nothing without their top receivers, but what happens when you're nothing with a top receiver? I guess there's more in the quarterback, but what does it say about a coach when that receiver doesn't touch the ball one time in the first half? Not a screen, not a play action with him as the top read, not a slant, not a jet sweep, a hundred million dollar decoy. He also has an all pro running back who's in his early 20s, a multiple time Pro Bowl edge rusher in Max Crosby, two tight ends including a rookie who looks pretty good, and a two time Pro Bowler who just turned 29. It's not a Super Bowl team, but they shouldn't look like this. And this ain't a one-time thing. He's got a history of this, a documented history of being a terrible head coach. A Belichick sized ego without any of the cachet, more rigid than the joints of a, nah, that's disrespectful. I wanna say something kind of funny, but a little less mean-spirited. Who's as rigid and as stiff as your uncle on the dance floor who refuses to make adjustments to an antiquated system. Many players have spoken out about an outdated offense and how McDaniels has completely sucked the life out of the team. But I don't know that there's a player who's fallen victim to this more than superstar receiver Devontae Adams. In years past, a wide receiver behaving this way would be tagged as a diva and painted as the villain. He'd be called the team cancer, a locker room time bomb, and his character would be assassinated fascinated all over ESPN. The problem is we got eight years of history on Devontae and he's never been a diva. He's never been disruptive. He's never been a malcontent so miss me with the narratives. Not to mention he's far from the only player on this team who voiced and shown frustration with the coaching staff. He's never looked this miserable playing football. Looks like a man who eats Taco Bell every day for breakfast. I mean he looks like a dude trapped in a soul crushing nine to five. And now that the trade deadline's passed there's no hope getting out maybe in the off season but he might have to give some money back which after this experience you'd think he would consider but even then there's no guarantee he's getting off the Raiders at first he wanted to stay in Green Bay but with A-Rod Mullen retirement he decided to make a move to play with his college teammate not just his college teammate but one of his best friends but shortly after arriving everything went downhill it's good to see you in that yeah. in black. Oh, Oh yeah, you this your first time, huh? Bro, the Raiders made the playoffs just a year before. And we got different memories on this, but they lost a heartbreaker to my Bengals. So that was a few pieces away from making a real run as they had climbed from mediocrity to a competitive and winning team. Then they made the grave mistake the Broncos made 10 years earlier. They hired Josh McDaniels, a decorated and high regarded offensive coordinator with six whole Super Bowl rings on his resume. You can't take that away from him, but it is fair to question. Look at Belichick without Brady. Things haven't gone well. So how much influence did McDaniels really have on these offenses? Or did he just take a ride on the back of the GOAT? To be clear, I'm not against a coach kind of moving to the side and allowing a great player to dictate the offense. But don't go to your next stop with your ego on 100 on some my way or the highway, I'm a genius type shit. Even if he was a competent coordinator or even if he was good. We all know that oftentimes don't translate to a head coach. He came to the Raiders organization with that rigid ass attitude and players who had always been productive all of a sudden were not this is the Raiders receiving core Devontae Adams Jacoby Myers and Hunter Renfro that's a good core can you imagine if the Chiefs had that core or if any functional offense in the league had that core 
Let's take a quick break to thank today's sponsor, SeatGeek. Since I'm looking for the best deal on these Erykah Badu tickets, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticket in app. With over 28 million downloads and more than 70,000 events to choose from every day. Concerts, festivals, or especially sporting events, you can go see artists whose music you think is fire, or just go and see your favorite sports team. With the NFL, NBA, and NHL seasons all in full swing, you don't want to miss out. Seeky got your tickets to every single game, plus tickets to mainstream artists or forgotten legends. They take tickets from across the web and put them all in one place so that it's easy to make sure that you're getting a good deal. Every ticket's rated 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad. Plus, every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return tickets ahead of the event using a feature called Swaps. This is an A1 feature that could save you, bro. Trust me. And you know I came through for you. Use my code FLIMLO for $20 off tickets when you purchase with SeatGeek. Again, that's $20 off your first purchase when you use promo code FLIMLO at checkout. So click the link in the description and download the app. Thanks to SeatGeek once again for sponsoring today's video. Without further ado, it's time to jump back in. He came to the Raiders organization with that rigid ass attitude and players who had always been productive all of a sudden were not. One of the top coaches in the league who shares the same last name, Mike McDaniels, is said to be very open-minded. Andy Reid takes suggestions. He'll take a play from anybody. They allow the players to feel involved and take ownership of the offense. Now, there's coaches who do less of that, like, say, a Kyle Shanahan. But when you look, every year, he's got a top offense. You could say there's limitations to every type of style, but you can't have a rigid style when your system doesn't work. I honestly, I, I don't know what to say at this moment. Late in McDaniels' first season, he benched a struggling Derek Carr, a move that had consequences way beyond a middling QB. Yeah, remember his best friend? The dude who signed there to play with him probably should have a talk with him before you make a move like that. Now, whether he did or whether he didn't, that does not give Devontae the right to just go full James Harden on him. He didn't. He showed up and he remained professional. But this is not Madden. These are humans you're dealing with. But Devontae is a professional. He tucked that away, said the right things in the media, and kept doing his job. But when you replace him with a guy who is not only not my boy, but is actually worse, we gonna have a problem. It's crazy too, because none of these teams was interested in Lamar Jackson. Remember, he was on the open market and all the teams was like, I'm good. Atlanta was good with Desmond Ritter. Raiders was good with Jimmy G. And a few weeks into the season, we can see. You're not good. Y'all won't even consider Lamar. Crazy. Josh McDaniels chose to lean back on his Patriots days as he seems to just refuse to see the league has moved on. The league has changed. And if you're really this boy genius, you should be able to adapt. He goes and gets Jimmy Garoppolo, which isn't going great, which kind of seemed to be the final straw for Devontae. Even in his bland offense, he got open for what should have been a 98-yard touchdown and a 60-yard touchdown. Jimmy misses both throws badly. Pretty hard to watch he had some pressure on that first throw but you're an nfl quarterback like it's not even close and he had time to get it off and i don't want to pile on jimmy g bro he's coming off an injury but everybody knows he's a stopgap guy at best and when you paying this much money for all these players and free agency when you want a quarterback who can actually get you to the promised land again bro i'm really not trying to stump out jimmy g but there's no way they thought their roster was more stacked than the 49ers and if he couldn't get them there then do i need to finish that statement like the point couldn't be more clear bro what were they thinking the jimmy g move just felt like a punt on third down like so y'all not even interested in trying to beat the chiefs I honestly, I, I don't know what to say at this. Now, Devontae wasn't perfect in this game. He dropped a slant and he missed a block that got Hunter Renfro blown up. He looks like a different player thanks to the cumulative effects of constant building and building frustration. It's sad to see one of the best receivers we've got in the league just trapped in the most miserable situation. Now they could fire McDaniels and in my opinion they should, maybe by the time this video drops they've already done that. And then even if they fire him they don't got much of quarterback. Many would argue that those are the two most important positions, head coach and quarterback. Like you can't win without them. The trade deadline just passed so there's no quick fixes. So we'll have to watch them in this situation for at least the rest of the season. In case you're wondering, that was not their last primetime game. And if you think it's getting flexed, 
No, it is not. What's the point of being able to flex if you are not gonna use it here? But hours after I recorded this in the middle of the night, Josh McDaniels was indeed relieved of his duties. Maybe the Raiders can go on a run like they did with Tom Cable. Remember him? He had the Dan Campbell vibe before Dan Campbell, but this was an absolutely necessary move. Maybe it fixes things, maybe it doesn't. But one thing you know for sure, bro, McDaniels doesn't work. So you owe it to the team to try something else. Hit me up in the comment section and let me know what y'all thinking. Other than that, man, I'll catch you in the next one, bro. Peace.